Hey, welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude, and if it's your first time here, please consider liking, commenting, and subscribing. It really helps me out on the YouTube algorithm. Today is part two of the Redivis radio series, where I go over the Redivis RT85 HT radio. And if you haven't seen episode one, I'll go ahead and link it here. And so today we're going to continue on with the series with how to program this radio via the programming software. And in order to do that, we're going to go over how to install the software. And I'm going to show you one or two quick, simple shortcuts on this radio to get this thing working as it should or as I have it for ham radio use. So let's go ahead and get started. What you will notice, though, is you're going to notice that there are periods where I pre-recorded myself doing some of the things and then I'll be doing a, a voiceover, if you will, during the video. And I think that just makes it easier for me to walk through and explain everything while the video is occurring. Again, let's jump into things. First thing that I did is I went to redivis.com and I'll link everything below so it's a little bit easier for you to find. But when I got to redivis.com, I was looking around and I didn't see anything that said downloads or anything along those lines. So I said, okay, well, what I got to do is, and then I found amateur and then I went to analog radios. And at this point, I found the radio that I was looking for. It happens to be the UV or excuse me, the RT85. So under here, there's a bunch of little uh, tabs, if you will, and I found the support tab, as you'll see, and I found on the left-hand side, firmware and software. And at that point, I could download the RT85 software, uh, which is what I did. And so the software downloaded for a few moments, and uh, you're going to have it saved somewhere. Mine happens to be on the desktop. On the desktop, I went ahead and I found the file because that's where it did download for me. And it's RT85 programming software. It's a compressed or a zip file. And it's at that point where I need to unzip this file. But basically, I'm going to extract that file. I happen to drag and drop it onto my desktop, but you could also extract too. And I'm using WinRAR for an extracting program. However, you could use Windows Extraction Program. It's fine. Um, I did scan this with Windows Defender. Everything was fine. And so now I just went ahead and I'm going to run it as an administrator. You might get something there that says, uh, you know, do you wish to allow administrative control to this program? I clicked yes. It's like I said, I scanned it and it scanned okay. But anyway, here we are on the welcome to the Redivis setup program. Setup will install on your computer. It's strongly recommended that you exit all windows and so forth. So I went ahead and I clicked next. And at this point, uh, I did let everything uh, basically install under the C drive. And the reason I did that is... I didn't want to change the file location in case there was some kind of critical file that this software was hard coded for. So I just left it in the C drive to avoid any kind of conflict. And uh, at that point, I went ahead, I clicked next. And again, I just left the program folder as it was, and I clicked next as well. Well, at that point, uh, everything does go ahead and install, and it finishes. And I clicked OK here. Now that the software is installed and you could see an icon on your desktop that says RT85, but we're not going to open it quite yet. Go ahead instead and plug in your radio to the programming cable. And to do that, if you've never done one of these before, on the right side of this radio, there's a little rubber flap. And if you open it up, you'll see a spot there for uh, your programming cable, which make sure you have a legitimate Redivis programming cable. Otherwise, you're going to run into all sorts of issues and you're going to think the radio is garbage when in fact it was a bad programming cable. Uh, you're going to want to go ahead and plug in the programming cable. And here is a word of caution. When you plug it in, it's only going to go in one way, as you could see, one way. But when you plug it in, you're going to think you have it in all the way. I will say that this little rubber housing unit tends to block your ability to press down all the way on this. You may have to apply a little bit of force and you'll feel it click into place. As I just did right there. And so once you actually have that plugged in, go ahead and plug in the USB portion of your programming cable into your computer. And then go ahead and turn on your radio. With the radio on, you'll go ahead now and open up your RT85 software. And once it opens up, you'll see it's a very basic software or programming software. Um, at the current time, Chirp doesn't support this radio. So this is the software that we have to program with. I could go through all the settings and everything, but I think the most important thing right now is actually getting you up and communicating with the radio. If you click on setting, you can click COM port select. And it does take a moment, as you can see right now. 
it always seems to take a moment to scan those COM ports. And you'll see there's multiple COM ports available for me. If I go ahead and I open up the device manager and you can't see the bottom of my screen right now, but there's a little Windows icon on the bottom left of the taskbar. And if you click that Windows icon, you can then start typing in device manager. And what will appear is an icon that says device manager. So you're going to want to open that device manager up and it's going to look like this. Actually, it's going to look like this because you haven't dropped anything down yet. And what you're going to want to do in the device manager is you're going to want to go down to that ports with the radio on and you should see a prolific USB to serial COM port, COM3. That's excellent. That's what we want to set in the programming software. And this could change if you reboot your computer or whatever. So in the future, if you have a problem where all of a sudden your radio is not being read, check to make sure the COM ports are okay. But here, COM select, I could select six or three. I said that was COM port three, so I'm going to hit that and click enter. And now your radio may read just fine, but I want to show you something that occurred to me just in case you have the same issue. If you go here to setting and a bitrate, you'll notice that they only have a bitrate for 57, 600, and 115, 200. Well, I was constantly trying to read the code plug and nothing was happening and go back into the device manager and where we have that prolific USB to serial, double click on it and go to port settings. And right now I have it set to 57.6 because it does work, uh, but you might need to change it to 57.6. It might be at something like 1200 baud rate or 4800 baud rate. I couldn't get it to work at 115 baud rate. Uh, but I got it to work at 57.6. So select 57.6 or whatever may work for you. And then click OK. With that said, we could now probably exit the device manager. And now we have the COM port selected and we have the bit rate set. Let's go ahead and try to read the radio. Uh, in order to read the radio, you have to have your radio plugged in turned on and it needs to be on a channel that's not active. If it's on a channel that's active, it's going to constantly connect and disconnect the USB from, from your computer. So you don't want that, but go ahead then and click program and then read. And you'll see now it's reading the radio. Everything's looking pretty good. And it usually just takes a minute or so. What's going to happen here is it says succeed. Great. So you can see I only have one frequency in here, channel name Plex. Um, this is just a default code plug, and that's why. But but you, what you might want to do is you might not want that, right? So let's go ahead and program three frequencies in here, a simplex frequency, a VHF frequency, and a UHF frequency. And we're going to do it two different ways. The first way we're going to program this is we're going to do simplex, and we're going to program it via this little Excel-type spreadsheet. Uh, I do want to make a note that with this software, if you program something in 10 or channel 10 or memory channel 10 and you later want to change it to one, it ain't going to happen. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, what I'll do is here, I don't need 435.0 in here. So all I got to do is I got to select the RF frequency backspace out of there, which deletes the RX frequency or the receive frequency and then click on channel two. And now you'll notice that all of a sudden that's gone, right? And so for number one or channel one, let's go ahead and type in 144.985. And I'm doing that one because that's a simplex frequency I enjoy. And if I click the tab or I mouse over to the TX frequency, it auto fills it in. Great. Being simplex, I don't need decoding, encoding. Uh, high power is typically what I like on my simplex frequency because it is a handheld and typically I'm a little bit further away. So I'm, I may need that little power boost. And the rest is okay right here, but I do want to set a channel name and I'll call this 985 uh, simp. And once I, I finish that, channel one's good. Now I can click on two and I can type in something else, or I can now even go into, since I'm selected on two, I can click on channel. And when I click on channel, you get channel details for two. I could use this up and down arrow to go between the channels, but I can't change the channel number via, via here again. You might be asking yourself, well, does it really matter how I program this thing? And, and the answer is yes, in a way, but not really. Um, let me just go back here real quick and I'm going to show you. 
On the Excel spreadsheet here, you have all these options and they're great, don't get me wrong, but there's no option here to scan. So if you wanted to change your scan list or block something from being scanned, you would have to double click on channel, go to that channel and either allow it or skip it. So just keep that in mind. Uh, we're gonna use this now, we're gonna go to channel two and let me rearrange a couple things real quick. I'm gonna put this up here and then I'm going to bring up Repeater Book, which if you've never been to repeaterbook.com, it's a great site, a great resource for information of repeaters in your area. You type in the area you're going to be or where you are, and it pops up a list of, of repeaters. And so with that, let's go ahead now. We have that information. I click on Channel Detail, and I'm going to start typing in all this information. So my receive frequency for this repeater is going to be 443475. Okay, now you'll notice I can't click TX frequency, but I really can. If I just hit the tab button, now it auto fills the TX frequency and it opens it up. And then I'm going to type in 448.47. And then tab again. And now I can name the channel. I'm going to name this N9 HEP UHF. And I do UHF because in a moment we'll actually add a VHF one as well. Now you're going to see my uh, tone is going to be 114.8. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to select 114.8 here. And as you can see, it auto fills in the encode as well. You may or may not need that. So you might want to even turn it off on the encode if that is your case. Uh, I don't need high power for this. So I'm going to select low power. And on UHF, your typical step, we'll, we'll leave it at that wideband we're good so everything else looks good i'm going to hit enter and i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to go ahead and go to channel three and once you're at channel three you'll see now we have the vhf n9 hgp repeater listed so go ahead and you could type in that frequency and for the downlink 144.330 that's my receive frequency again i hit tab and for the tx frequency we're going to go 144.730 and, you know, I do realize with Chirp, they have a nice little feature where you could actually auto import everything from repeater book. But again, this is kind of basic software for the channel name. And nine AGP VHF, just something you'll remember it by. And uh, for the decode, we'll do 1072. And like I said, if you wanted to leave in code, you would leave in code. But if you didn't, you know, you wouldn't just depends on how things are for your settings. Uh, I am going to leave this in the scan list and then I'm going to click enter. Now that we have three channels in here for programming, I do want to show you a couple other things real quick. And the first thing I want to go is to the basic radio set options. And so here we have a display mode. And once we program this thing, this display mode will show you either the frequency that you're on per each memory channel. It'll show you just the channel or it'll show you the name that you created. So as I like it, I like to do the name because I have a tendency to remember 985 SIMP, oh, N9 HEP, that's in Crystal Lake, Illinois, and so forth. So I'm going to set that to whatever I feel like. You could set your squelch level. Um, you know, that all depends on your preferences. Uh, but anyway, you could set like your basic stuff as far as the radio goes here. When you go into your radio and you turn it on, you could have it show a character string. You could have it just be off so it just doesn't show anything when it displays, but a lot of people like the voltage, so your battery voltage information will be displayed. And uh, there's a beep on here. You could turn your beep off. Uh, you could have your light setting, and if you saw my last video, see I set my light setting around 2, so you guys could actually see, uh, you could actually see the screen when I'm doing things because that light kind of gets bright. Anyway, there's a lot more options in here that you could play around with. But uh, I do just kind of wanted to show you that just so you're aware of things. Now, I'm, I'm going to have the Vox level off. I mean, honestly, I don't use Vox. But when it comes to the next episode and I'm going through the features, I will show you guys how to use Vox in case you want to. Uh, so go ahead and once you have configured all the settings that you wish on to here, you can hit enter. And one more thing I want to show you is uh, this radio option here. And this radio option is for your your you've fm radio like 99.5 or in this case 90.4 and you could have up to 24 stations programmed in here or you could just use a vfo and go up you know every every step you want to 
But I do want to show you that you could just program radio frequencies in here for FM radio, 105.5, And then whenever you feel like you're done and you programmed enough, you can click OK. Uh, one of the things that is kind of a bummer is if you notice in the software, there's nowhere you could just program NOAA weather radio. So ideally, it would be really cool if I could take this FM radio slot and somehow program NOAA weather radio in it for listening only. But I can't. If I were to do it in here, yeah, it would definitely allow me to do it. But here's the problem. You know, these frequencies, are, they have the potential to be unlocked. So then I, I accidentally transmit on something or, or hit that emergency button that's really annoying. And all of a sudden, I'm, I'm transmitting on NOAA weather radio and committing a crime or a violation, essentially. So I won't do that. But I did want to make a note of that because if anybody at Redivis is watching or uh, maybe somebody else has a solution on how to get NOAA weather radio in here, that's a pretty cool thing for people who like radios. Uh, for example, I love listening to the FM radio, especially when there's weather conditions. I love having my ham radio handy. But how nice would it be to also have a NOAA weather radio in the same radio so if there's an emergency, I could tune in without having to worry about transmitting. Right now we have an ideal, we'll call it a code plug again. And the first thing we want to do is we want to file save as. Now, uh, the reason we want to save it as is it's always nice to save your code plug. And I already have one for 10, 19, 20, 20, but I'm going to overwrite this. I would not recommend overwriting any of the ones that came with the programming software by default because you may need to default or go back to those in the future, like the default file and so forth. So I'm going to go ahead and save it as code plug 1019-2020, and I'm going to click yes. It's at this point, I think we're ready to go ahead and program the radio or send all the information to the radio. So with your radio still on, go ahead and click program and click right. And here we go, it's writing the radio. In just a moment, we should have everything on the radio. And you see now it says succeed, so everything should be good. You can go ahead and click OK. And go ahead, you could take your programming cable out of the radio. And on your radio, you should now be able to check to make sure all the frequencies were programmed correctly. That's about it for the episode. There is one thing I wanted to mention, and I'll mention it again in the next episode to make sure that as many people see it as they need to. But when you get this radio, or at least when I got this radio, I didn't have a VFO mode. Now, typically you would tap the pound button to go in between memory mode and VFO mode, but it just wasn't happening with this radio. So what I had to do is I had to hold down one and seven with the radio off. And then when I held down one and seven and turned the radio on, it then enabled VFO mode. So I could then turn on the radio and I could swap between memory or channel mode and vfo mode so i just wanted to show that to you so you weren't really super confused or you know upset that this thing didn't have vfo mode because it does you just need to enable it the tips and suggestions as well as the configuration of the software i'm hoping this all helped at least somebody understand the programming of this radio a little bit better and we're going to go ahead in the next episode and discuss how to program this thing via the front panel display but also we're then going to go through some of these features and everything. So if there is anything you want to see or any questions you have, leave me a comment below and I'll do my best to hit those in the next episode. Until next time, I'm Ham Radio Dude 73